look into the word of God. And to see what the Lord wants to speak to us. Amen. We've been having some good discussion times. Okay, we've been speaking about Aliyah in the Bible. Right now we're on part two, scattering and regathering. And we spoke about how the Lord said that he would bring the Jews back to the land of Israel. And it said then he would put a new heart in them. So he connected the coming back to the land with the Jews receiving the new covenant. Поэтому возвращение евреев в землю связано с получением Нового Завета. Это в Иезекииле 36 главе. And then we talked about how today in, in the land of Israel the congregations are beginning to work together. И как наши дни общины начинают сотрудничать вместе. With evangelism. Организуют евангелизации. And working together for outreach. Сотрудничать вместе достигают And uh, one example is at the Bumba Mela festival. <laughs> Bumba Mela. So here, here again is the picture of this is the believers' tent here, and people were gathering as as uh, I got to share the gospel with them. Okay, let's uh, go to the next. Okay. Believers are also there calling the Jewish people to repent of idolatry and immorality. Также верующие призывают их покаяться в идолопоклонстве и аморальности. As we read about in Ezekiel, как мы читали в Езекииле, these were the very things that caused the Lord to scatter Israel among the nations. Именно из-за этого Господь рассеял Израиль среди народов. Remember he said, If, he, if you turn away from me, that I will send you out of the land. So now that the Jews are back in the land, uh, much of the same things are happening. The Bumbamela festival is uh, a New Age festival. Festival Bumbamela, движение New Age. And Israelis are exploring Eastern religions. And paganism. And so we share the scriptures with them. And we say, look, this is what caused our problems in the first place. We need to turn back to the Lord. You can go on. So here is <coughs> here is the the logo of the Bumbamela festival. As as we mentioned, it encourages Israelis to explore Eastern religions. But uh, Ezekiel 36, 17 through 19. A second to turn there. Okay, ready? It says, Son of man, when the people of Israel were living in their own land, they defiled it by their conduct and their actions. Remember, the Lord spoke this when they were in exile in Babylon. Помните, Бог сказал это, когда они были в изгнании в Вавилонском пленении. The Lord said, so I poured out my wrath on them because they had shed blood in the land and because they had defiled it with their idols. И излил я на них гнев мой за кровь, которую они проливали на этой земле, и за то, что они оскверняли ее идолами своими. I dispersed them among the nations and they were scattered through the countries. Я рассеял их по народам, и они развеяны по земля, по землям. I judged them according to their conduct and their actions. So these are some of the scriptures we would share with Israelis when we go to the festivals. And we'd call them to come back to the Lord. Okay, here's some more pictures. Here we're breaking bread with Здесь those who need to know the Messiah. Пищу, разделяем 
трапезу вместе с теми, кто не знает Мессию. This is at, uh, the tent. Это палатка верующих. And we would offer free hot meals. И мы раздавали бесплатные обеды. Remember, it was a three-day camping trip. Как вы помните, этот лагерь проходит три дня. And a lot of these young people don't bring food with them. Многие из этих из этой молодежи вообще с собой еды не берут. So they'd be pretty excited to have a free hot meal. Поэтому они очень радовались, когда мы им предложили бесплатный горячий обед. So we would gather together with them and eat with them. Мы собирались вместе, кушали. And we'd share the gospel. И рассказывали Евангелие. Here's a, a young man named Dino. Этот молодой человек зовут Дино. He was he was a, a Jewish young man. Еврей, молодой еврей. And he he just kind of wandered into our camp. И он как-то так попал в наш лагерь. He didn't know who we were or what it was about. Он не знал, что это такое и что это значит. And so he started asking questions. И он начал задавать вопросы. And so I opened up my Bible and I started sharing from Jeremiah 31. Uh, we've already we've talked about that scripture already. But it's the where the Lord speaks about the new covenant. And I began explaining to him, explaining to him. I said, the time is coming, declares the Lord. When I will make a new covenant with, with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And then he started quoting it back to me from memory. Again, this is, he's just a, a Jewish young guy. Not, not really religious. Didn't really know what he believed. But he knew the new covenant. And as I, as I mentioned yesterday, in high school, all Jewish, pe all Jewish young people have to learn the new covenant. And it's on their test to graduate from high school. But they have no idea what it is. So I began to tell him what it was. He just he kind of thought about it. Didn't say much. But we had a very good connection with him. And so I got his email address so he yeah. could stay connected. Email, <coughs> But after we left, after I went back home, домой, I tried to email him and it didn't work. So there was something wrong with the email. But the next year we brought another group back at Pesach. And we were praying, Lord, help us to find Dino. Now this is a shot in the dark. Over 30,000 people. 30, Tents, as far as you can see. We said, Lord, bring him to us. So we set up in the believers camp area. And guess who set up tents right beside us? <laughs> It was Dino. Dino. And he again, he wandered into our camp. Wow, you're here. Oh, it was this. I said, wow. wow. What a coincidence. <laughs> And I told him, I said, we prayed that we would find you here. And so he stayed with us some more and we got to talk some more. He had a friend with him uh, both times. His friend's name was Hen. And his friend was into very sinful lifestyle. And the first year we met him, he didn't want to talk to us. He didn't want to have anything to do with us. <laughs> But the second year, he was very interested. And he talked with us a lot. And he said that he, that year he had started to pray to God. And he, was, he, he asked the Lord to change him. 
и просил Бога, чтобы он его изменил. Ну, и что просто у него не получается остановиться. Но он каждый раз приходил к нам на поклонение, прославление. Также он приходил к нам на обеды. И в тот год со мной была моя семья. Жена, Рути, некоторые дети. And he would just look at our children. И он просто смотрел на наших детей. And he said, and he he said, you're just so blessed. И он говорит, вы такие благословленные. He said, I wish I could have that. Хотел бы я, чтобы у меня такое было. I said, well, you can. Я говорю, ну, может такое возможно. And we prayed for him. Мы молились о нем. So and we pray that God is going to continue that work in him. И молились, чтобы Бог продолжал свою работу в нем. So we've been looking at Ezekiel 36. Talking about the Lord bringing the Jews back to the land. And then giving them a new heart. Now in January of this year, our Prime Minister Netanyahu, he gave a speech at the Auschwitz death camp. And he said something amazing. He said that Ezekiel 37 has been fulfilled. He said, out of the graves of the Holocaust, the bones have come together in the rebirth of Israel. Кости соединились вместе в возрождении Израиля. Now, I'm sure you know, и я уверен, что вы знаете. It's very rare for the leader of a country to be quoting from the Bible. Очень редко бывает такое, чтобы лидер страны цитировал Библию. It's even more rare Даже for, более редко for a leader to say, "This has been fulfilled in our nation." Очень редко явление сказать такие слова в отношении своей нации. But this is what he said. Но это он сказал. And you've probably all seen photos from the Holocaust. Наверное, вы все видели фотографии Холокоста. And the pictures of the mass graves. Фотографии массовых захоронений, массовых могил. It's a very graphic picture. Братских могил очень, это яркие картины. Okay, let's advance. Especially as we read Ezekiel 37. Особенно читая Езекииля 37 главу. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. So the Lord is speaking to Ezekiel. And he's telling Ezekiel to prophesy to these bones. And Ezekiel is supposed to tell them, this is what the Lord says. God is using the prophetic voice of Ezekiel to bring forth his purposes. And this, and this is what he was to say. I will make breath enter you. Вот я веду дух в вас. Now the word in Hebrew, на иврите слово the word for breath is the same as the word for spirit. Дух, э, дыхание, на английском дыхание, на русском дух, но значит ruach. дух, рух, руах. I will make breath enter you. Я веду дух в вас. And you will come to life. Э, я вдохну вас, и вы оживете. I will attach tendons to you обложу вас жилами and make flesh come upon you, и выращу на вас плоть and cover you with skin. покрою вас кожей I will put breath in you, введу в вас дух and you will come to life. и оживете. Then you will know that I am the Lord. И узнаете, что я Господь. И тогда вы узнаете, что я Господь. Седьмой стих. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Я изрек пророчество, как повелено было мне. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. И когда я пророчествовал, произошел шум, и вот движение, и стали сближаться кости, кость с костью своей. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath 
in them. И плоть выросла, и кожа покрыла их сверху, а духа не было в них. So the this this valley of bones came together. Поэтому в этой долине костей кости срослись вместе. Сформировали людей. Skin came on them. Кожа на них появилась. And they looked like an army. И они были похожи на армию. But they had no breath within them. Но которой не было дыхания. They didn't have the spirit. У них не было духа. He said they came together bone to bone. Кость с костью соединились. And this is this is a picture of Israel today. Это картина современного Израиля. There is now there's an army in Israel. В Израиле сейчас есть армия. But most of them do not have the spirit of God. Но большинство из них нету духа Божьего. There are starting to be more believers in the army. И в вер в армии все больше и больше появляется верующих. And more believers in the land. И больше верующих вообще в Израиле. But still, most of the nation is without the Spirit of God. Но все еще большая часть народа без Духа Божьего. So what Netanyahu said was true. И то, что Нетаньяху сказал, правда. Partly. Частично. Israel has come together, but they've but they've not yet received the Spirit of God. Израиль воссоединился, но еще не принял Дух Божий. And the time has come for the next part to be fulfilled. И пришло время, чтобы исполнилась следующая половина. Where the breath or the spirit comes into this vast army of Israelis in the reborn state of Israel. Следующая половина пророчества, когда войдет Дух Божий и возродит государство Израиль. Let's look at verse 9 of Ezekiel 37. Девятый стих той же главы. Says then he said to me. Когда сказал он мне. Prophesy to the breath, son of man, and say to it, "This is what the sovereign Lord says." Son, человеческий, скажи духу, так говорит Господь Бог. Come from the four winds, O breath, от четырех ветров приди дух, and breathe into these slain, и дохни на этих убитых, that they may live. И они оживут. So I prophesied as He commanded me. И я изрек пророчество, как он повелел and мне. Breath entered them. И вошел в них дух. They came to life and stood up on their feet. И они ожили, стали на ноги A vast свои. army. Весьма, весьма великое полчище. And this is the day that we're living in today. И в этот день мы живем. The Lord is going to fill the Jewish people with His Spirit. Господь наполнит евреев духом своим. As they're brought into the new covenant. Как было в новом завете. And the Lord is looking for the prophetic voice today. И Господь ищет пророческий голос сегодня. Just as He spoke to Ezekiel. Так же как Он сказал Иезекиилю. He wants to speak to His people today. Он хочет говорить к своему народу сегодня. To prophesy. Пророчествовать. And to declare what God's will is in heaven. И провозгласить то, какова воля воля Божья на небесах. So we can bring it down to earth. Для того, чтобы она воплотилась на земле. We need to be we need to be in tune with what God is saying. Нам нужно быть на одной волне с тем, что говорит Бог. Too long the church has not understood what God's will is for Israel. Слишком долго церковь не понимала воли Божьей для Израиля. In our next session, we're going to be looking at the history of of the making of modern Israel. И на следующем занятии мы будем рассматривать историю создания современного Израиля. And too often, God has had to rely on people that aren't even believers to establish Israel. Слишком часто Богу приходилось использовать людей, которые даже не верующие, для того, чтобы создать Израиль, воссоздать. He's calling the church today to a higher place. И он призывает современную церковь взойти на высший уровень. To a place of understanding His will. И вместо понимания Его воли. So that we can pray. Для того, чтобы мы смогли молиться. So that we can intercede. Чтобы мы могли ходатайствовать. So we can be the ones who bring forth the kingdom of God on earth. И чтобы мы смогли быть теми, кто принесет царство Божье на земле. We read several scriptures already. Мы уже прочли несколько мест Писаний. About what's going to happen at the end. О том, что произойдет в конце. About how the nations of the earth are going to gather against Israel. О том, как народы соберутся против Израиля. In Zechariah 12 and 14. Захария 12, 14. It spoke about the nations gathering to try and destroy Israel. Он говорит о народах, собравшихся в попытке уничтожить Израиль. And we read in Psalm two. И мы читали во втором псалме. That the kings of the earth gather together against the Lord. Что цари земные собираются против Господа. And against the Messiah. И против Мессии. So at the end times. 
последнее время, последние времена, когда все народы сойдут против Израиля, на самом деле они будут воевать против Бога и против Иешуа. И в тот момент Израиль и церковь будут одним целым. Because coming against Israel is coming against Yeshua. Потому что выход против Израиля это выход против Иешуа. So we're in the time right now where God is bringing us closer together. Это мы в то время, когда Бог ближе нас соединяет. So that we'll see that we we can stand with Israel. We must stand with Israel. И мы увидим, что мы можем и должны стать за Израиль. It's a process that God is bringing us together. Это процесс, когда Бог ставит нас ближе к And we need, we, need, we need to be sensitive in the spirit of what God is saying. It's a great mystery how God works together, Jew and Gentile, as one. And yet, there's distinct purposes for both. So I want to close in prayer And just ask the Lord to tune our hearts. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, for this day that we live in. The greatest day to be alive. Lord, we are seeing more Israelis come to salvation than ever before. We want to understand your heart. We want to understand your purposes. We want to understand what you are saying in this day. Lord, you said that you will do nothing in the earth without telling Your servants, the prophets. И ты говоришь, что ничего не делаешь, не сказав того прежде своим слугам пророков. Lord, we are your servants. Господь, мы твои слуги. Make us that prophetic voice in the earth. Сделай нас с этими пророческими голосами в земле. Give us boldness to pro proclaim your will and your word. Дай нам смелость провозглашать твою волю и твое слово. Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you for revelation. For giving us understanding. Help us to proclaim it to the church. Help us to proclaim it to Israel. Help us, Lord, to proclaim it to the world. In your mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.